Okay. So at this point we've seen how to use post requests to carry extra information in the form of a JSON object with the requests that we send to our server. Right? So we were able to send our name to the server and correctly parse that and include that in the response that our server sends back. Now, this is generally considered to be the best way to add information to our requests, especially complex information. But there are several other ways to do this. Okay. Before we move on to implementing things like upvoting or comments for our blog site what we're going to do is take a backward look at a concept that we learned when we were implementing the article pages in our front end. Okay, so you might remember that for the article pages on our front end, and I'm just going to type this here, in order to take a look at a specific article we had to go to localhost 8000 or 3000. It was slash, and then it would be slash h articles slash h learn node, for example. Okay, now remember that this second part of the URL was what was called a URL parameter and the way that we used it was our page, right? The article page component was able to look at this thing and use it to load the corresponding article data. Now it just so happens that on the server we'll generally want to be able to do the same kind of thing. Right? In other words, when we create an endpoint that will allow users to upvote a given article, well, what we're going to want to do is allow the front end to send a post request or a put request in this case would be a little more accurate to something like slash articles, slash, and then if they want to upvote the learn react article they would say slash learn react. And then maybe you would have an extra segment here that would say upvote that would actually, you know, specify that we want to upvote that article. Okay. So in order to be able to do this, we need to know how to work with parameters in Express. And the good news here is that it's fairly straightforward. All we have to do is when we're creating an endpoint, right? So let's just say that we want to create a get endpoint that will say slash hello and say hello to the person's name using URL parameters instead of a request body. All we have to do in order to specify that we want a URL parameter in this route is say colon and then, you know, whatever we want to call the URL parameters. So if we want to call this name, it would look like that. If we want to call it person name or who to greet, right? You can call it whatever you want. And that's just going to determine what the property is called on the request object as you'll see, but for now let's use name and what we're going to do is add a callback for this. It's going to look just the same as the one that we defined for our post endpoint. And then inside here, what we're going to do is get the name by saying const name equals request.params. Alright, so request.params is going to give you an object containing all of the URL parameters inside of here and their values and then we're going to say .name. Now, if you want to make this even shorter you can use object destructuring and just say const and then put name and curly braces there equals request.params. And that's generally what you'll see done just because it's a little bit shorter. Okay. So now that we have the name, Let's just send back a response and we'll say response.send. And again, we'll use back ticks and say hello and then we'll just insert the name there. Okay? And here we'll put two exclamation points here instead of one, just so we know that it is in fact this endpoint that's responding when we send a request to it from Postman. Okay? So now that we've created that endpoint all we need to do is restart our server by saying node source slash server dot js and hitting enter. We should see that our server is listening. So let's head back to Postman. There it is. And we're going to send a get request now to this new URL parameter route that we just created. So we'll say slash hello slash Sean. And then just to prove that the request body isn't involved at all let's just remove that. I'm just going to delete everything here. And if we click send now, we'll see that it says, hello, Sean, with two exclamation points. So anyway, that's the basics of using URL parameters in Express and what we're going to be doing as I've hinted is using this sort of functionality to allow users to upvote different articles and add comments to different articles. So, one last thing that I want to show you though, 
is that it is indeed possible to have multiple URL parameters. And, you know, if we were to say, hello, slash, name and then goodbye, slash, other name, just as an example, what you're going to see if we log out the request.params object, by saying console.log request.params, alright? And then we'll have to restart our server again of course, I'll show you how to get around this shortly. Alright, so if we go back to Postman now and change this URL up here, we'll say slash, hello, Sean. And then we'll say slash, goodbye, John. Okay, if we click send now what we'll see is that sure enough we get that response back, but more importantly if we go back and take a look at the terminal here, we'll see that sure enough the request.params object contains all of the keys, right? Which are the names that we gave to the URL parameters and the corresponding values that were at that segment in the URL. So that's how URL parameters work in Express. Let's just change this back to hello name and we'll get rid of this. And that will give us our original functionality back. All right now that we've seen some basic examples of how an Express server works let's make our server actually do something more relevant to our blog. What we're going to want is for our users to be able to upvote our articles to help other users see which of our articles is the most popular or most helpful. Right? So in order to do this we're going to need to add some more code to our back end. And first of all what we're going to do is just remove these hello endpoints. You can feel free to comment them out if you want but I'm just going to remove them to keep everything clean. And what we're going to do here is create an upvote endpoint that will look something like this. We're going to say app.put and the actual path that we're going to use here is going to be slash API. Alright. And yes, this is something new here. I'll talk about that in more detail later on. So for now don't worry about it. And then after that we're just going to have what you would expect and say slash articles slash colon name. Alright. So that's going to be the name of the article that we want to upvote and then we're going to say slash upvote. Cool. So now that we have that let's just define the callback for this root handler. We're going to say request and response. And inside here is where we're going to put the logic for actually upvoting different articles. Now, before this will actually work, what we're going to need to do is define a sort of fake database in our server that will keep track of how many upvotes each article has, right? Later on, we're going to be replacing this, of course with an actual database like MongoDB. But for now this will help us to at least get the logic right in each of our root handlers. So up here at the top, what we're going to do is define a new object, which we'll call articles info and what this is going to look like, it's going to be an array of objects, each of which is going to represent a different article and keep track of how many upvotes that article has. Alright. So inside each of these objects, we're going to have the name of the article, right? So learn node for example, or learn react I believe was the first one. And then after that, we're just going to keep track of how many upvotes that article has. So we're going to start each of our articles off at zero upvotes. So now let's just do the same thing for our other articles. We're going to create one for the learn node article. That one will start off with upvotes equal to zero and last but not least, we're going to create one for the Mongo article. So we'll just say Mongod for the name and the upvotes for that one is going to be zero as well. Okay. So again, this is just going to serve as a temporary in-memory database that will make development much easier. And then later on, we're going to come back and actually replace this with MongoDB. So let's head down now to this endpoint that we created. And the first thing that we're going to need to do is based on the value of the URL parameter, we're going to need to figure out what article we need to upvote. And once we figure that out we're going to need to actually increment the number of upvotes on that article's object in our database. So first things first let's find out what article we actually want to upvote. And the way that we're going to do that is by using the request argument here. So in order to get the value of this name URL parameter in the URL, what we're going to do is just say const name equals request.params. Alright, that will give us the current value that's at that name segment here in the requests that we just received. Cool. 
So once we have the name the next thing that we have to do is actually find the corresponding article with that name and what this is going to look like is we're just going to use JavaScript's built-in find function. And we'll say const article equals articles info dot find. And we want to find the article in here which we can just call a whose name property is equal to this name property URL parameter that we just parsed up here. Okay. So we're moving right along. We now have the article that we wanted to upvote in the first place. So the next thing that we need to do is say article.upvotes plus equals one. So we're incrementing the upvote property on that article that we found. And yes, it probably would be a good idea to make sure that that article exists as well. So what we'll do is just say if article then article.upvotes plus equals one. And for now let's just send back a response to the client saying something like the article now has four upvotes or something like that. So in order to do that, we'll just say response.send and in back ticks here, we'll say the, and then we'll say name article now has, and then we'll send back the new number of upvotes by saying article.upvotes upvotes. Okay. So it'll just tell us how many upvotes that article now has. Now in the case that the article doesn't exist, what we're probably going to want to do is let the client side know that that article doesn't exist. And the way that we're going to do that for now is just by saying response.send. And we'll say that article doesn't. And we're going to need to use an escape character here. So just put backslash and then the single quote character and then we'll say doesn't exist and that's it. Okay. So that's pretty much all we need to do for this upvote endpoint for the time being. So let's actually test this thing out by restarting our server. Okay, we're going to stop it and run node source slash server dot js again, to make all of those changes take effect. And if we go back now to Postman, what we're going to want to do is send a put request to localhost 8000 slash API. Remember that we have this slash API in there and then slash articles and we'll try upvoting our learn react article and then we'll say slash upvote. Okay. So if we click send now this should work. And what we should see down here is a message saying the learn react article now has one upvote. Okay. So let's click send and sure enough we'll see that that's the case. If we click send again, we'll basically see that that just keeps upvoting the article. So anyway, that's how to create a basic upvote endpoint using express and node. Okay, so now that we've created our first real endpoint for our application, it's time to take a look at how to fix the problem of having to manually restart our server every time we make changes that we want to test. So, as a matter of fact, there's an NPM package that does this for us and it's called Nodemon. Now, the actual pronunciation of the name here is up for discussion. In fact, Nodemon's website even has this question of how to pronounce Nodemon correctly in its FAQs. And it basically just says that all of the pronunciations are correct. So anyway, I pronounce it as Nodemon, and the way that we're going to use this is first of all we need to install it into our project by saying npm install Nodemon. And this is actually only a package that we want to use in development, right? You won't want to use Nodemon to run your app in production. You'll just want to use the basic node command or some other package. So what that means then is we're going to want to add the save dev flag to this command, which will install this as a dev dependency, which basically means that it will be put in a separate part of our package.json, along with the dev dependencies, instead of the actual production dependencies. So let's hit enter and that will install that package for us. And once it's installed, we can actually run our server by saying npx nodemon, and then the path to the file that we want to run. So we'll say source slash server dot js and hit enter. And what this is going to do is you'll see is it's going to continuously run our server. And every time we make an update to this file, it will automatically refresh and restart our server. So we see that it says server is listening on port 8000. So let's change something now in our server. I'm just going to collapse this here. Let's change something about the text in this. So we'll say the article now has blank up votes. Let's just add some exclamation points to that, I suppose. And what you're going to see if you open up the terminal again is that Nodemon has detected those changes, right? It said restarting due to changes and starting node source server.js. 
And it now says server is listening on port 8000 again. Okay, so now that we've made this change, let's just make sure that the change is in effect by sending another request to this upvote endpoint. We're just going to go back to Postman and click send. And sure enough, we'll see that it says the Learn React article now has one upvotes. Not grammatically correct, but you get the idea and sure enough, we have those exclamation points at the end. Now, another thing that you may have noticed here is that the number of upvotes here actually reset when our server restarted. Now, as it happens, this is the reason that we want to use an actual database like MongoDB, instead of just storing things in memory as we're doing right now. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at later is how to use MongoDB to store this data and make it a little bit more permanent. So for now, just know that whenever your server restarts, which it's now doing automatically, you're going to lose any data that you accumulated from sending requests, etc. So the last thing that I want to show you here before we move on is how to make it easier to run this command in the first place. Because npx nodemon source slash server dot js, it doesn't really roll off the tongue very well, does it? So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our package.json file and create a special script that will take care of running this command for us, okay? Now the way that you do this, it's pretty straightforward. In the package.json file, you just need to find the script section, which is right here and inside that section we're going to add another script called dev. And for that script, we're just going to write the command that we want this to be a shortcut for. And that's going to be npx nodemon source slash server dot js. Okay, and don't forget the comma there, because again, that will cause an error if you forget that. And what we're going to do now is now that we've defined that script, we can just run our application continuously using nodemon by saying npm run dev, which is much easier to say and also much easier to type and remember and that's going to have exactly the same effect as just running the original command, right? It's really just a shortcut in the background that we can use to make it easier. Okay, now one last thing here. We actually don't need the npx when it's in a package.json script, so this script can literally just say nodemon source slash server.js. And let's just try it one more time to make sure that works if we run npm run dev sure enough, we'll see that it says server is listening on port 8080 again, along with all of this stuff up here that nodemon has printed out. All right. So now that we've got our server working fairly well and we've implemented upvote functionality and made it restart automatically, the next thing that we're going to do is add the ability for users to add comments to articles to our server. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to want to do here before we create a new endpoint for adding comments to articles is we're going to go up here to our articles info in memory fake database thing and we're going to add another property to each of these that will store the comments for each article. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add a comments property to each of these, and the starting value for this is going to be an empty array. Now, what we're going to do is inside the endpoint that we create for adding comments, we're basically just going to take any information that we get from the user, such as the comment text and create a new object that will insert into this comments array. So let's just add this to the rest of our articles. We're going to say comments, empty array, and comments, empty array, and that's all we need to do there. So now that we've changed that, let's head down here, and underneath our upvote endpoint what we're going to do is create another endpoint for adding comments to articles. And this one is actually going to be a post request, because basically what we're going to be doing here is creating a new comment, alright? And the distinction between when to use put and when to use post can be a little fuzzy sometimes. So this isn't really a right or wrong thing to do, just for me, it feels more correct to use a post request handler for this one. So let's say app post. And the path for this one, we're also going to have it start with slash API, just like our upvote endpoint up here. And after that, we're going to say article slash name. So we're using the URL parameter again there to decide which article we want to add the comment to. And then we're just going to add comments after that. So we're posting a new comment to the comments array basically for this article that we've specified in the URL parameter. So now that we've done that, let's just define our callback function for this route. And before we'll actually know exactly what to do inside of here, 
we have to decide what format the comments are going to be specified in when they're sent to the server as a request, right? So let's head back to Postman. And we're going to change this to a post request, and we might as well just change the URL up here while we're at it. We'll just say API slash articles slash learn react slash comments. And what we're going to want to do here is allow the client side, right? The front end to specify both the text of the new comment that they're adding and the name of the person who actually is adding the comment. All right. So what that means for our post request is it's going to have a request body that has two properties. The first one will be something like posted by. And let's just say Sean for now. You can use your name here again, if you want. And then after that, we're going to say text, and this will be the actual text of the article. And we'll just say, awesome article. Cool. So that's what the incoming request body is going to look like. So what this means is back in our server.js file, in this endpoint that we're defining, we're going to want to get both of those properties from the request body. So what we can do is simply say, const posted by and text equals request.body, and that should successfully get the posted by and text properties from the request body. So now that we have those, what we're going to want to do is insert those into the comments array for the corresponding articles. So we're also going to need to get the value of this name URL parameter up here. And what that looks like is we're just going to say, const name equals request dot params. And that's it. So we have everything that we need now. So let's just find the corresponding article using this name, URL, parameter. That's going to look the same as what we had up here. So let's just say, const article equals articles info dot find, and we want to find the article here whose name property is equal to the name URL parameter. And once we have that, we're going to add a new comment with the posted by and text properties to that article's comments array. And to do that, we just need to say article.comments.push, and we'll just create a new object here with the same properties posted by and text. And that's all we need to do. So one more thing though, just to make this a little bit more robust, Let's add an if statement around here to make sure that the article does actually exist, and that's actually going to go under where we find the article here. So if the article exists, we're going to push that new article data onto the comments array. Otherwise, what we're going to do is respond with a very similar response to what we had up here, in fact, so similar that we can just copy and paste it if we want, just telling the client side that that article that they're trying to add a comment to doesn't exist. And lastly, we're going to want to send back some sort of response after adding a new comment to this article. And for now, let's just say response.send, and we'll send back. Let's just send back the entire array of comments for that article so that we can see that they're successfully getting added. So what we'll do is just say article.comments, and we'll send that back to the client side so that we can have a look at it in Postman. Cool. So that's pretty much all we need to do for this add comment endpoint. So what we're going to do, we don't need to manually restart our server because Nodemon has been doing that in the background as we've been making changes and saving those changes. So we can simply go directly to Postman and try this request that we set up. Let's try clicking send. And what we should see now is we have an array with that new data included in it. And if we try sending another request with different data, so we'll just say instead of awesome article, we'll say, I agree and click send. What we'll see is that both of those comments are now part of the comments array for that article. So for now, we've completed this endpoint for adding comments to our articles. But one last thing that I want to point out again is the fact that whenever our server restarts, right? So let's just change a little thing that will make our server restart. Let's add an exclamation point to that. For example, we'll see that our server will restart here from Nodemon. What we're going to see is if we go back to here and click send, all of the data has been reset, right? We're basically back to square one and we're looking at whatever data we originally specified in our fake in-memory database. And this is again, something that's to be expected when you use in-memory databases, and that's why the next thing that we're going to see how to do is incorporate MongoDB into our application, 
which will allow us to persist our data in a much more permanent way.